Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Dorofus Deminar series. My name is Chris Rizel. I'm the Managing Director. I'm joined by my colleague Jasper Wong, who's one of our product managers. Hi, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. So we've held many webinars in the past and uh, recently started a series called Innovator Basecamp, where our customers present interesting and innovative projects uh, and you can find that on YouTube if you want to watch some recordings but we we get asked all the time you know can you demonstrate a particular workflow or do a bit of a deep dive into a particular feature and so we did a survey at the end of last year to get your feedback on the topics you'd like us to present and that's what we'll be covering in this seminar series throughout the rest of this year. Uh, I have to say the results were a little bit unexpected. Um, you know, what we thought you'd want to see versus what you actually wanted to see uh, was a little bit different, but it just goes to show how valuable your feedback and input really is. Um, also, in terms of the format, the consensus was to keep it around 15 minutes. Uh, so with that in mind, we're going to uh, not take questions, but we'll flash up Jasper's email at the end of the presentation. So if you do have any feedback or questions, uh, you know, please reach out to him directly afterwards. So today's topic is room data sheets. Jasper, what are the main learning objectives for today? Uh, so for today's session, uh, we will look at, you know, what is a room data sheet? Where is it being used? What goes into creating them? And we'll finish off with a demo of how you can generate a room data sheet from Dorofus. There are many different terminologies for room data sheet. It is sometimes referred to as space data sheet, room book, room program. The briefing data uh, is provided by the client. Sometimes this data has to be extracted from the client uh, via a reverse briefing process using the room data sheet. It is a tool or document to get every stakeholder on the same page regarding the project requirements, so everyone works towards the same goal to deliver a successful project. On a project, room data sheet is always read in conjunction with other design data from the consultants. It is also used to validate design in the review process and sign off by client representatives. This is a list of some of the more common projects we project types we see that requires a room data sheet. It may be a large building where the visitor journey is important, such as convention center or performance space, or it may be a building where complex activities are carried out, for example, hospitals or laboratories. Room data sheets contain many information. It can be general information such as to identify the room in terms of the room name and number, briefing data uh, such as your target area or your occupancy. It also describes the purpose and the usage of the room. It contains stakeholder specific requirements such as your HVAC, lighting, which are all environmental conditions. It also contains details of building elements such as your floors, walls, ceiling finishes what goes into a room such as your FFNE, engineering services such as your GPOs or ICT panels and many others. All in all, it contains a snapshot of information about the room. On a typical project, there are a lot of deliverables and the room data sheet encapsulates the data of a project. Thinking back to the previous slides, you can see some of the information within these deliverables are also information that's in the room data sheets. There are a lot more details in these deliverables than in the room data sheet. So the question is, which comes first? Is it the deliverables or the room data sheet? The second question is, does the room data sheets and deliverables need to be coordinated? I shall leave you with those questions and carry on. Putting together a room data sheet requires collaboration and input from different stakeholders, such as the planner, the architect, engineers, interior designers, and specialist consultants. 
these parties need to ensure that section of the RDS is accurate, and sometimes that data is dependent on other parties. Another benefit of producing a room data sheet is it can contain information that otherwise may not be modeled, especially at early stage of a project. The design team consumes the data in the room data sheet. The other stakeholder that consumes the data is the client. Without an RDS, they will need to go through mountains of documents and drawings to find what, to find what they want. This is a big task. Room data sheets help to fast track the searching of information for the client to be able to provide feedback to the team. The RDS provides everything in a consolidated report. A PM is also interested as it provides a coordinated view of information which can help with getting client approval for any deviations from the project brief. We describe the room data sheet development in a simple three step process. Step one, the project participants collaborate and coordinate to develop their information. This information is used to inform what is designed and modeled. At this stage, any deviation can also be noted, noted in the form of a return brief using the RDS. The third step, the client reviews the information and provides feedback to the team. And the process starts again. It is a cyclical process and it's never one, it's never a one-time deal. Usually there are several rounds of client review before it is finalized. Now we will look at how this data comes together in Dorofus. Within Dorofus, the data is organized in a way that is conducive to the project team workflow. Each stakeholder have their own space to fill in the data. There are view filters which can limit information by party or by project stage. The information is in turn translate into what you see in the RDS report, or the information may be data you want to manage in the software, but excluded from the room data sheet. User permissions can be customized based on areas of responsibility. This is to ensure that different stakeholders do not edit each other's information. For example, the architect controls the room name and number, and the engineer cannot edit this. Likewise, the fire engineer defines the alarm quantities and locations, and the architect cannot edit this. We always say our user interface is highly customizable. This includes uh, editing the attribute names. Here is a demo video that shows the ease with you or your database admin can change the name through the dynamic graphical user interface. We call it DIM GUI. We'll carry out a small change to rename the flag name from windows and doors to doors and windows. We do this in the DIM GUI uh, editor. You can also rename the attribute names using this interface. Returning to the room data view, the flag has been renamed in the software, and this change will also be reflected in future reports. Within the software, there are allowances to incorporate your logos for the report. You can also add project hero shots to be used in the opening screen or on the cover page of a report. There are guidance notes in the settings to help you or your database admin know which image to update. So up to now, we have shown you the DIN GUI, how information can be organized. The report you are seeing now is a built-in report that comes with every database. This template provides a lot of flexibility on what you want to see in the output. We are doing another demo now session to do a deep dive on the DIN GUI and the built-in report. 
this is an example of a custom report. Custom report is specific report format that is not out of the box. The data is still the same. It's only the look and feel or the layout of the report that's customized. Here is another example of a custom report. As you can see, this is a really different format. Our built-in report offers maximum flexibility. Custom report, because of their specific design, requires maintenance and upkeep if you want to make changes. We will demonstrate how we can generate a room data sheet report using the built-in templ uh, template. It will be for a room with stakeholder requirements, the FFNE images, and a list of documents. We will be using the room function number to identify the room. In the report and export module, we will use the room data template. There are different methods available to filter for a room. As we are selecting an individual room, we will select by the function number. We will select general room properties and stakeholder information to include. We'll include all FFNE in, in the room and add a list of documents associated with the room. On the second page, we will give the report a custom title. There are options to change paper sizes and also fonts. Lastly, we'll select all the images and define how we want them laid out. Here is a report with custom title. As we scroll down the page, you will see various stakeholder information in their own style and in their own requirements. A list, a list of FFNE to follow. And you see the images and lastly, a list of documents associated with the rooms. You can save this export setting to reuse. I'm going to give this report setting a name and save it in the demo now folder. You can also share this with a project team so they can use the same settings uh, for their reports. We have collected a list of best practice working on room data sheets. We can spend 15 minutes on these slides, but we will not. However, we will send this in an email to everyone. On your part, you will need to consider which are important for your project. We have three key takeaways to share from this list. First, lock down the room data sheets format early on in the project phase. Establish synchronization protocols and define the data flow between the geometric model and the uh, database. Consider all your deliverables you may need on the project uh, so you have time to uh, do the necessary coordination. We have come to the end of the first demo now. I hope you've gotten something out of this session. Over to you, Chris. Well, thanks, Jasper. That was really great. Well done. Um, just referring back to the questions you raised at the start, you know, which comes first, the RDS or the deliverables? Uh, well, that's a bit like the chicken or egg debate, of course, everyone's got their opinions, but what we do know for sure is that it will require coordination. Um, just in case anybody wasn't able to join today's live session, how can they find this content? The recording of this session will be posted onto the Drillfus YouTube channel. We'll put the entire demo now series into a playlist so you're able to access them uh, in the future. Uh, we'll notify everyone via an email uh, when the uh, video is available. Perfect. OK, well, our next session will be in the middle of March, where we'll look at linking Drofus to Revit and Archicad, uh, and the invitations will be going out shortly. So thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.